training injuries suck. Today, I'm going to give you 10 keys to injury prevention in the gym so that you can keep making progress and stay fit after 50. And the first thing to acknowledge is injuries happen, but they happen whether you work out or not. And if you don't work out and you're frail as a result, they tend to be a lot worse. But nobody wants to be injured in the process of trying to make themselves fit and healthy. That's loserness. Now let's be clear, the barbell prescription, which is basically the starting strength system modified to keep you fit after 40 or 50 or 60, is simply the strongest and most effective exercise medicine available for healthy aging. That's because it satisfies all of the exercise medicine prescription criteria, the first and foremost of which is safety. Properly performed strength training is one of the safest exercises possible. Even so, injuries cannot be totally avoided but most are preventable, and preventing injuries while lifting is an important skill for athletes of aging. Your injury prevention program starts today with these 10 simple guidelines, especially the last one. And just to be clear before we get started, we're talking here about injuries sustained during exercise, not the kind of injuries that occur when people trip over a bar or lose a bench press in their mouth because they didn't have safeties or spotters. That's about gym safety, which is another topic. And we're just going to assume that you have good equipment in good working order in a clean, well-ventilated facility without a lot of gear adrift to create trip or impact hazards. We're going to assume that you are using spotters or safeties when appropriate and not using spotters when not appropriate and that you're not doing weird stuff or training drunk or high or while using firearms, explosive devices, chainsaws or BOSU balls. And with all that out of the way, let's get down to cases. Number one, you got to warm up. Now ask any sports medicine doctor or physical therapist. Soft tissue that is cold is less well perfused with blood and it's less compliant, which is a fancy way of saying it's less flexible. It resists stretching more than warm tissue and up to a point we want the tissue to stretch smoothly and freely under a load. Cold, underperfused muscles and other soft tissues are more likely to fail under loading, meaning they're more likely to strain and tear. It's important here to consider two types of warming up. The first is the general warm up, which happens at the beginning of the workout and is best composed of a simple, gentle, whole body routine that raises heart rate, respiration, and body temperature. The second is the specific warm up which is performed before each new exercise in the workout as an unloaded or lightly loaded performance of that exercise. So the general warm up for the day might be some light calisthenics, some rowing, a short Tai Chi form, or even some light prowler pushes or brisk walking. The specific warm up for a squat workout is unloaded squats, air squats and or empty bar squats, followed by a rational systematic accumulation of reps and weight until you get to the target loading for the day. Skip this stuff at your peril, folks. Warm-ups are critical for injury prevention in the gym. Number two, don't stretch before workouts. The data to date, coupled with a lot of coaching experience, indicates that static stretching before workouts doesn't really improve performance or prevent injury. Rather more likely the contrary. We want muscles and tendons to be compliant, sure, but we don't want to be gumby either. We don't want to extinguish or blunt the stretch reflex, and we don't want muscle to lengthen too much or too fast under loading. Stretching after training, however, may improve blood flow. It may increase flexibility between sessions, and it may reduce soreness. Or it may not. Give it a try, but avoid pre-workout yoga. Number three, proper exercise selection. It's critical for preventing injuries in the gym. The barbell prescription hinges on the squat, press, bench press, and deadlift, plus a conditioning component, because these are the exercises that confer the most benefit and build the most strength. More importantly, these exercises all fit the most critical criterion, that of safety, for reasons expounded upon at length in our book. However, your particular situation, especially after 50 or 60, may require some modifications or replacements. Almost everybody can bench press and deadlift and perform some form of the squat. But 
folks over 40 are well advised to carefully individualize their exercise selection with a view to their individual capacities and in injury prevention. And this is where a coach who knows what he or she is doing is just invaluable. Number four, follow your program and don't get greedy. Want to be safe in the gym? Stay on your program. Regular, measured, consistent gains are what training is all about. Ego lifting and greed are the best ways to get hurt in a gym. Sullivan at the bar. Here are folks, the world championship of Sully's imagination, and he's really going out there. A bit of ammonia to prepare him for a 200 pound PR over his training max. Getting himself ready, he's going to unrack an extra 200 pounds. This guy's Phenomenal. got some balls on him, Ian. Some might say courage, some might say foolhardy, but extraordinary. Walking it out. And, and, oh, oh, oh dear. He's hurt. Oh dear. He, he, yes, he's hurt. He's, there he goes. I don't think he's going to walk no, away no, from this we one. Ain't, we ain't going to be seeing him again anytime soon. But what a memorable performance, Ian. Indeed, indeed. He'll certainly remember it. Remember why you're doing this. To improve physical performance, health, and well-being. Not to show off or soothe your self-esteem. Be a grown-up. Number five. Use good form. The exercises in the barbell prescription are chosen for their remarkable safety and effectiveness. But they're only safe and effective if they're performed properly. Now, minor form errors are not something to freak out about. Everybody displays minor form errors, including and most especially yours truly. But major deviations from form distort the mechanics of the movement and do pose a potential for injury. If you have good form during warm-ups, but your form completely falls apart at working weights, and maybe your working weights are too high. Adjust accordingly. The extra five, 10, or 20 pounds just isn't worth it. And if your form is a mess even during warm-ups, get some coaching. It's worth it at so many levels, and injury prevention in the gym is one of the most important. Numero six, don't train unrecovered. If you've read the barbell prescription, starting strength and practical programming, you know that recovery is the linchpin of the entire training process. Good recovery is essential for good form, among other things, and therefore essential for safe strength training. Do not train fasted, sleepless, sick, dehydrated, or distracted. And don't use heavy loading on injured body parts that haven't healed. You're just asking for it. Number seven, rest between sets. Now this is a corollary of number six, but it's so critical and so frequently neglected that it gets its own spot on the list. Failure to rest between sets is one of the most common errors we see among self-coached athletes who come to us for consultation coaching. Unless you are a very raw novice, you need at least five minutes between most work sets. And if you don't take it, and give your muscles and metabolism a chance to recover from set to set, you're risking injury from either form error or simple lack of force production. A little digital or kitchen timer is one of the most important pieces of training equipment you have. Use it. Number eight, use supports as indicated or as advised by your coach. We're talking about wraps, straps, belts, and the like. If you need knee wraps, use them. If you need straps for the dead, use them. What about those gym bros and internet fitness gurus who tell you that they're not natural or that they'll blunt your gains? The most respectful, constructive, and intellectually honest response I can possibly offer to these persons would be to say that they're idiots. Appendectomies, refrigerated foods, seat belts, and cell phones aren't natural either. I mean, come on. Don't use supports willy-nilly or for cosmetic effect. These wraps make me feel like a badass! <laughs> <laughs> but if you need them, put them on proudly. Work out comfortably and train productively and safely. Number nine, avoid training in excessive cold or heat. This is good advice for any athlete, but particularly the athlete of aging. Cold, as we noted earlier, affects tissue temperature and circulation and results in stiff, non-compliant soft tissues that are more prone to injury. Excessively hot training environments have broad-ranging effects on physiology and metabolism, 
especially in adults over 50 or 60, and can even pose a risk of hyperthermia, rhabdomyolysis, which is muscle breakdown, or organ failure, as in heat stroke. If you're keeping score, that's all bad. And hot environments are bad for those with heart failure because we thermoregulate in kind of the same way that a refrigerator cools food, which means we need a good pump. Mild or subclinical heart failure is much more common in older adults than you might think, and many of them train, as they should. But hot temperatures put them at increased risk. Bottom line, work out in a well-ventilated environment at a temperature that is comfortable for you while you're under the bar. Number 10, listen to your body. This is huge. The longer you train, the more you're able to tell the difference between a minor inconsequential discomfort and something more sinister. If you feel a muscle belly strain in a way you haven't before, or you have a joint that's getting really annoyed with what you're doing, or you feel like you're pushing something beyond its limit, stop. Rack the bar and evaluate what's going on. Talk to your coach if you have one. If the pain disappears and you think you can go on, try the movement with light weight, like an empty bar. And remember, it's never wrong to consult with a healthcare professional who understands your training if you're not sure. I'm not gonna say, don't be a hero, because you are a hero. You came to the gym to train hard, to do something difficult that most people, unfortunately, can't be bothered to do. That was the heroic part. Not listening to your body and continuing to perform an exercise that is actively hurting you and threatening injury? That's the stupid part. Don't be that fool. There are doubtless other tips for training safely, but these are, in my opinion, the most critical. If you follow these 10 simple rules, your minor strains and sprains and tweaks and tears will be few and far between, and you'll enjoy long, uninterrupted spans of regular and productive training that will make you stronger, healthier, and harder to break.